And we're back. Hopefully you had a quick few minutes to grab a drink or answer a quick email or text, but I know you're hanging in there to see um, all the great talks that we're having today. Our next talk up is crafting a homepage that connects and converts with Katie Boykin. Katie is a web designer and marketing strategist whose superpower is transforming boring websites into beautiful, strategically designed assets that help content creators and online businesses make a meaningful impact and income online. So let me bring in Katie. Hi, Hello. Katie. Hi. Sorry for Thank mispronouncing you. your name earlier. I was doing it by memory. <laughs> That's okay. I think it happens often. Oh, uh, uh, people always get my name wrong too, so I understand. <laughs> uh, but it's so great to have you here. And I'm really Thank looking you. forward to hearing I'm what honored. you have to share. Yeah, Thanks. fantastic. So I'm going to give you the floor. Uh, you can, we'll hold comments and questions until the end. We'll have people put them in the chat. So you go ahead and present. And then um, when I see that final slide come up, I'll rejoin you and we'll do the Q&A together. How does that sound? That sounds wonderful. Thanks so much. Fantastic. My pleasure. We'll see you in a little bit. Enjoy. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It's really an honor and a privilege to be here. Um, in our session, we are going to be talking about homepages, specifically how to connect a homepage that connects with your idle clients and converts them into either subscribers or paying customers. So in this specific talk, we're going to be going over two things. First, we I want to make sure that you know what the two main purposes of your website are. And then I also want to go over nine ingredients to a successful homepage. But before we dive in, I want to share a little bit about myself and what I do. So I am a website designer and marketing strategist, and I primarily work with Cadence, the whole Cadence plugin suite right now. So my team and I design custom websites. And uh, we also have DIY resources on DIYDreamSite.com where we sell Cadence Child Themes and have a monthly membership that gives you the templates, tutorials, and coaching to DIY your own website without breaking the bank. And at this point in time, I'm pretty much doing 99% of my website builds with the Cadence Tool Suite because it's so incredible, versatile, easy to use, and I love it. Um, I have the honor and privilege of working with a lot of primarily content creators and online businesses. So the Hawaii Vacation Guide, Making Sense of Sense, Money Making Mommy, Teaching Millionaires, Milestone Mom, uh, The Cooking Mom, Speak Up Conference, Moving to Spain, Country Now, and a ton more. But I just wanted to give you a little snapshot of my background and what I do and then dive into the presentation. So without further ado, let's talk about does design really matter? And I've got a few stats that I pulled from the internet here for you. So users will form an opinion about a website in 0.05 seconds. And 48% of people cited that a website's design is the number one factor in determining a business's credibility. And 57% of users won't recommend a business with a poorly designed website. The final stat I want to share is that 89% of consumers will shop with a competitor after a poor user experience. So I want you to answer the question, does design really matter based on these stats? I would say yes, 100% it does. So since design matters and it's going to impact your conversions, if you don't have a good one in place, let's go back to the heart of your entire website and talk about what are the two main purposes of your website. If you are in the comments, you can go ahead and chime in and make your guesses. Um, I don't know that I'll be able to see those comments come in just yet, but I'll, I'll be able to check them in a little bit. Um, but go ahead and make your guesses in the comments. If you guys have ever read the book, Opting Into Optimization by R. John McDonald, he is the uh, founder of the company, The Good. I actually learned about this book and bought it through one of Cadence's collaborations. So shout out to Cadence for that connection. But I, I learned about these two specific uh, purposes of the website in this book, and it's a really great read. So the first one is that your website exists to help your visitors buy. And the second is to help your visitor research. You're at, at, sorry, let me rephrase that. At the end of the day, you're in the business of solving people's problems. So if I am having an ailment, maybe my wrist is hurting, I'm going to go to Google and type in a question. And then hopefully people will find our website in order to reach research the answer to that question. And then also if there is a, a cream that I can purchase, maybe I'll make a purchase in order to fix that problem. So ultimately, I want you to start thinking about your website, not in a way to just 
display everything that you have, but in order for someone to research or make a purchase. That will transform how you start to think about your whole homepage. So to craft a strategic homepage, you got to do a little bit of homework first, and you need to know three things. You need to know the who, the what, and the how. So the who is who are you serving? Are you clear about the person that you want to attract and also convert into your business? You also need to know what what problems you're helping them solve. I kind of just touched on that just a second ago. And the how is how will their life be transformed if they work with you or read your content? Now, there's a lot of strategies we could dive into with all of this, but I'm not going to do all of that since we have a limited amount of time. But I just want you to make sure that you do have these thing, these three factors decided on before you even start working on redesigning your homepage or starting a, a brand new homepage design. So if you are stuck on that, I do have a free blog post about how to identify your idle client in four easy steps. Plus, there is a free worksheet that you can download. It's a Google Doc that you can literally type in all your information. If you will fill that worksheet out in depth, this will help you with your copywriting when it comes to what to say on your website homepage. So that's really important that you do know who your idle client is, what problems you're helping them solve, and then how their life will be transformed. So if you need that resource, you can check that out. There's a link there. If you can't find it, you can go to katiewigan.com, just uh, in the little search bar, type in idle client, and the blog post will show up for you. So one thing about home pages and really any page that you design on your website, and this is my personal belief, that content should dictate design and not the other way around. I know it's so tempting to just want to grab a template online and just figure out a way to plug your content in there. But if you truly want to build connection and convert your readers, that is going to take a very unique approach because... There is no two businesses that are the same, which means there's no perfect homepage layout for every single person. So while I'm over some ingredients that you can put on your homepage to make a successful homepage, there's not like a step-by-step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step -by -step formula that it has to go this way. It's more like, do you have these elements in order to build that connection and also present your offers in a way that's going to lead to a conversion? So. I also know that the, cad the Cadence audience has a lot of different viewers here. So I know that um, just from being in the Facebook group, if you're not in the Cadence Facebook group, by the way, it's a wealth of knowledge and resources and community. It's incredible. Um, we've got designers and developers who are in there to uh, people who have been in the industry for a long time, but they're now moving away from other tools and they're switching over to Cadence to people who are starting their brand new websites for the first time. So. I also want to make a disclaimer here too, that if you're a restaurant and you're a news site and you're a food blogger, you're going to need to adapt this to what your niche is, is doing as well. So just keep that in mind, a little disclaimer, because again, there's no perfect homepage layout. So let's dive in. Let's talk about what are the nine ingredients for a successful homepage. The first ingredient is that you need to have clear visible navigation. So after reaching a company's website via some sort of referral site, whether that's Google or uh, Facebook posts or something, 50% uh, of visitors will use the navigation menu at the top of your website to orient themselves and to figure out where they should go. I like to think of your um, your website homepage a little bit like a hotel lobby. So I don't know if you notice, but I'm in a hotel room right now. I'm actually at a conference uh, in New Orleans, and um, I'm at the FinCon conference. It's 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 been fun, but um, being in the hotel has kind of made me think about that. When you walk into the hotel lobby. It's like you can take the elevator and go up to a different floor. You can go check in at the check-in desk. You can go to the bellhop and and do all the things you need with your like you have a, a little system in the lobby in order to orient yourself about where you need to go and take the next steps. So I like to think of, of your website really similarly to that. And so we need to make sure we have that clear, visible navigation. So here's an example, and we'll talk about these little pieces that make up clear menu navigation. Now, the screenshot that I have here is from one of my demo sites on my one of my Cadence Child themes. So don't pay attention to really what the words say, because that's not the purpose of this. Um, but you do need to make sure that in the top left corner is typically the best layout. You want to have a small legible logo in that horizontal format if possible. If you have a real chunky 
a logo, like a square logo or something like that, you may have to play around with the margins and have them fall on top or below. I'll show you an example of that in just a minute in order so that the um, there's not too much spacing all the way around uh, in your menu. So I, I can dive into a little bit more explanation on that here in just a second. So horizontal format, if you've got one on your logo and it needs to be small. I know a lot of my clients, whenever we work together, they're always asking like, can you make my logo bigger? People don't necessarily need to know your logo anymore. You need to persuade them to research and buy on your website. So just make it so that it's, it's visible and noticeable, but not the main thing. You, that's not the whole point of the website. The other thing that you need is uh, seven navigation options or less. So I'm talking about this part right here. You need seven menu navigation options or less in order for people to kind of orient themselves around. And honestly, the less that you use, the better, especially if you are going for conversions. So the about, your blog, um, your contact, those are technically kind of ancillary things depending on your business. Those could go in the footer. We'll talk about the footer towards the end, but the footer is basically more like your junk drawer and it's an additional navigation place for you. So you can eliminate all of those um, kind of like ancillary items that are in your menu and put those in the footer so that you can streamline and get a more focused experience for your idle client. So we'll look at some examples of menus and I'll, I'll, I'll walk through that too. The other thing is just that there's an X over that. And that is because most people know that they can click on the logo in order to navigate back to the home screen. The only reason I would say keep it there is if you have maybe um, an, an elderly audience or something or uh, something along those lines where it needs to be super clear or you don't have a lot of menu navigations because it's uh, a one page website or something like that. But for the most part, you can eliminate that. You also can have your shopping cart or search icons there. And then people typically like to read in a Z pattern down the page. So they'll take a look at the top left, scan all the way over. So you're on your website, your top right corner in your menu is your prime real estate. So if you can include a call to action with a button, that will be one of the most clicked items on your entire website. So I encourage you to add that button if you can. Now, if you have too many options, I totally understand, then just do your best to illustrate those in the um, main navigation section. Now, if you will notice in my screenshot, I do not have social media icons in the header. Why do you think that is? If you are here in the comments, share that with me so that I can, I can see. I'd love to know. Um, okay, so the reason that I don't want you to put any social media icons in the header is because if you're, especially if you want to convert your people into subscribers or customers, you don't want to send them into the abyss of social media land. As soon as you click over there, even if you're there for a specific person to follow you, you will get lost in the sea of notifications and all the flashy things that are going on. So I highly recommend that you do not want to send people away from your site. Yes, Tammy just said that. She said, because you don't want to send people away from your site. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so I think that's a good overview of the clear menu navigation. I'm gonna actually pop over here and show you um, an example of a really poor menu navigation. So why do you guys think that this doesn't work? I mean, I've already got it on the screen, so spoiler alert. But number one, the logo is way too large. Look at how much space it's taking up on the screen. That's what I was talking about. If you have a chunky logo and you add a little bit of padding on either side, there's gonna be a ton of negative space down um, underneath your main navigation, like menu options, that it, it just doesn't work. Also, you cannot read the menu because there's not enough contrast between the photo and the words here. And the background photo is very visually overwhelming. So if you were to use this exact same layout, I would include a background overlay that's dark, like a dark black that that's maybe at an, uh, anywhere from a 50 to an 80% opacity so that those white words will really pop off the screen. And I would totally reduce that logo over to the left-hand side. Uh, yeah, Teresa, exactly. Can't read text, bad contrast. It's the worst. So here are some additional header navigation menu examples. So uh, the business is from Business Insider. So that's like a new site example. Abby Connick, she is um, a illustrator and she's actually one of my favorite people to follow. She, she teaches you how to use Illustrator. It's pretty cool. But she has a very focused um, menu navigation here, which I think is great. And her primary call to action on the right-hand side, she wants you to shop, which is great and very clear. 
with the membership academy this is a particular website that is only there to convert you into a member or allow you to sign in so you won't find any additional menu options here so depending on what the goal is of your main homepage, you may want to increase or reduce the number of options. So if you are doing something where you're like just trying to convert someone into a member for a sale or something like that, just keep it as clean as possible. And then on my website, um, I do have a chunky logo, but I actually uh, have a negative margin on top and bottom. Have to do that with custom CSS, but it does allow me to include that without having too much spacing on the right hand side. And arguably, I could probably lose uh, a few of those menu items in my footer. And then Making Sense of Sense is a content creator, and she primarily writes content and, you know, ad revenue, affiliate marketing, those are her streams of income. And so in those cases, she's just going to immediately put her silo categories. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that term before, but essentially the, the blog post categories that are going to have a meaningful um, impact for her ideal clients. So if they want to learn about making money, working from home, she's got her categories up there instead of having services or blog. It makes more sense for her. So those are some good um, menu examples. Um, the second ingredient we're going to be talking about is an effective hero section. Now, I'm curious if you guys know uh, what the term hero section is, and also if you've ever heard of the term above the fold. We're going to be talking about that here. So the hero section is the very first thing that you see on your website before anyone ever scrolls. And I've already got the text here too, but uh, we often refer to this as above the fold. So back in the day when newspapers were the only way we could get content and information, when it was folded, that is what you would see. And then if you open up the, the newspaper, everything below that was con considered above the fold. Well, we use that same language here as, as website designers. And so your hero section is what your user will see on the screen before they begin to scroll. In this screenshot you see here, this is um, part of the DIY dream site membership. Um, and so this is, uh, I have like 27 different hero section layouts inside of this template that you can one click import directly onto your website. And so as you can see from this one screenshot, there's no one right or wrong hero section layout necessarily. It could be centered text. It could be left or right centered. There's a number of ways that you can design it, but the key is just making sure that you have the right things on a hero section. So what would make up a, an effective hero section? In this particular example, I'm gonna be talking about a local or a service-based business. And I think that's really important. If you're here and you have a new site or you're a blogger, your hero section may or may not look the same as this, but uh, we'll just go through these together. So first, it's got a high quality photo or graphics that are gonna give context to your business. I think this is crucial. Stock photos that are like people cheesing, all awkward, that's not going to build that genuine connection. So let's just say that um, this is the Milo theme. This is one of our, our Cadence Child themes. And this is the hero section for that. So this is an imaginary uh, person. This is a stock photo technically. But let's say if you were just going to look at these pictures, you would think that this was for a copywriter or uh, someone who takes notes or something like that. Um, so this is, and uh, uh, Gary asks, what do you think of a large slideshow as a hero section? And uh, we'll talk about that towards the end, but um, we'll talk about sliders at the end. But in the photos, you just want to make sure that it's clear about what you do based on the visuals. So you don't want to have just a picture of like a family skipping through a field um, if you are uh, a dog trainer. Like you, you got to have context. If you're a dog trainer, you got to put dogs in your in your photos. I feel like that's pretty straightforward, but some people actually do miss the mark on their photography. Make sure that they're high quality. The second thing is you want to have a short, direct headline that explains the who, the what, and the how, which we talked about earlier. Um, and we'll look at uh, my hero headline example is that Mine says, helping content creators and small biz owners easily launch your website and build a thriving business online. So right there, who, what, and how. The who is helping content creators and online business owners. The what is launch your website. The how is building a thriving business online. That's the transformation I'm going to help them achieve. And that's just one small example. We could go into hundreds later. Um, the next part of the hero section is that you want to have a really short description that either explains your business or text that invites them to click your CTA button. So, um, for instance, I'll actually give you, I'll actually show you an example here in just a second. The fourth thing I want to share is that you also want to have a clear, strong call 
inspection button that potentially can lead to a conversion or go over to a page that will um, help them get to that conversion. So let's talk about a poor hero section. In the comments, if you guys can, what is wrong with this? I don't know if you guys can type your fingers fast enough. Um, but obviously, all we know is that there's a really beautiful woman on the screen and her hero section says, yay, you're here. And then we have a little bit of context. It says, get your free prayer book. So maybe she does something in the in the, in the faith space, but not 100% sure. This is actually my beautiful client, uh, Rachel Wojo. And she is incredible. I had the opportunity to work with her. She is a Christian writer, speaker, author. And let me show you the after of her hero section. So her hero section has been improved. And now her, her headline says, helping you cultivate faith to weather life storms, struggling with anxious thoughts, grab 10 free prayers to calm your heart, plus enjoy our monthly Bible reading challenges. So what I love about this text is that description text is actually using it to call someone to action. And because she adds the plus enjoy our monthly Bible reading challenges, that's going to already communicate, hey, there's going to be a reason to stick around on my email list, not just sign up for the one freebie I'm going to provide to you, which I really like this language. So it's clear that her goal of this hero section is to uh, get email list signups. So I really think that um, this is a beautiful representation. And because she's obviously talking about weathering life storms and she writes a lot about grief, it makes sense to have a moving uh, ocean background to really give that additional context. And then we decided to make her photo a little bit smaller. Yes, the CTA button is a lot more visible in this version. Uh, Five Figure Lifestyle said that. And Teresa said she has no idea what this the business does in the previous version. Yeah, so you can see a, an amazing difference between the before picture and the after picture. Okay, so let's just say another example, since I was really talking about like online business owners and, um, and possibly local businesses for that top hero section. If your primary goal is to maximize ad revenue, like these two examples I'm gonna show you with a secondary goal of email subscribers, your hero section might look totally different. So Dash of Sanity is a client we're launching next week. So here's a sneak peek at her new design. Um, and so her goal is to, again, maximize ad revenue and get people to do her recipe posts. So it makes sense to get people into dinner or to find the, the dessert recipe that they want or orient themselves really quickly with a quick icon. But in, it's really hard to see in this uh, screenshot. This uh, top bar says, get uh, 10 free dinners uh, to cook tonight. I believe that's exactly what it says. It's really small on my screen too. Um, so if someone clicks on that, a modal will pop up and people can uh, subscribe to her email list from there. So you can see the primary goal is just jump into my content. I've got lots to share with you. But if you also want these in your inbox, you can you can download those. Country Now is a uh, country music news site that I designed as well. And uh, similarly, they're obviously wanting to share the most recent news. So they just want people to jump right into their content, especially since it's timely. But if you see on the right hand side of the screen, it says subscribe. If you click on that, it will pop up with a modal pop up so that someone can actually join their email list and get the news in their inbox. So I just want to go. I just wanted to show you that the hero section is not going to look the same. It really depends on your niche and um, and what your your monetization goal really or conversion goal is. Okay, let's go on to ingredient number three, which is all about your problem section. So by talking about the problems our customers face, we, we will deepen their interest in everything we offer. Donald Miller said that in his book, um, Building a Story Brand. If you guys have not read that book, I highly recommend it. It's really great, especially if you are um, an online business owner. And so it's really important that you don't just say, yeah, you're here, like Rachel did, and then just say, you know, podcast blog about. I don't know anything about that business if that were the homepage that I was trying to read through. So let's get, let me give you some examples of problem sections. And I've tried to do my best to like include um, the, the links to the website so that if you guys want to explore those sites, you can do that on your own later. But um, my website homepage says, uh, does your current website feel outdated? And that part that's underlined, I, I couldn't get the moving, the movement uh, captured, but I'm using Cadence's typed text feature, which I love. Thank you so much, Ben, for <laughs> giving us that awesome upgrade. So that word outdated actually will backspace and will change to stagnant, uninspiring, unorganized, so that 
I'm able to outline multiple problems that people are having with their websites without it taking up a lot of space on the website. It's really effective. And it's also a lot of movement on the page. So it's, it's nice um, and engaging for them to read. But it says if, if websites aren't your zone of genius, it's normal to feel this way. There's a lot of moving parts to designing a website and marketing your business online. Fortunately, websites are and marketing are my jam and I've got just the resources for you. So that's what my problem section is. And if someone reads that and they're like, yes, my website feels outdated or yes, it's stagnant or whatever, they're going to be like, oh, I'm in the right place. I'm exactly where I need to be. Let me keep reading. So it just engage, it hooks them in to the, to the story that we're beginning to tell and it, it draws them into the page. Rachel Wojo, she doesn't have a big section like I do. She just has a title that's actually above her services section, which we'll see here in just a minute. And her says, tired of feeling spiritually overwhelmed. That is um, her problem section. So you technically can have a question here, which is really effective because it's going to make the visitor think, oh yeah, that's me. And then it's like a confirmation and they're going to keep reading, but you don't have to, it doesn't have to be like this negative thing. Um, KK Yoga says you deserve to be in alignment with yourself and life around you. So if someone is thinking I'm out of alignment, then she, this statement here is going to, again, affirm you're right. I do deserve that. And I need that, but I'm stuck. I don't know how to get there. So they're going to then dive into reading more information about that. So I love this um, problem section. If you don't have it, I feel like a lot of websites miss out on this section, um, especially if you are a service-based business owner or um, a local business. I think it's really, really great um, to have something like this if you can work it in. Okay. So this screen that you see, we talked about the first three sections, the header navigation menu, hero menu, hero section, and well, as well as the problem section. I typically love to see a website have those three stacked together, but the next uh, ingredients that I'm going to share literally can be moved around as much as you want. So if you want to have ingredient number eight underneath number three and ingredient number six underneath number eight, you can mix and match. So just keep that in mind that I, I like to have these three typically especially for those service-based business owners. But um, but ultimately then, uh, sorry, I got distracted in the, in the comment section, but ultimately you can uh, mix and match here in just a minute. Okay, so let's move on to ingredient number four. Next, I want you to uh, make sure that you have a clear way for someone to work with you or buy your product. So this is when the buying takes place. So, uh, Let's go ahead and I'll show you some examples. So one of the most popular like services layouts is a three column format. So um, in Rachel's example from rachelwojo.com, she has her problem section as the title of the section. And then she goes into the info boxes with the icons. So hers is uh, an invitation to join her podcast, an invitation to uh, choose a reading plan, and then also to, again, join her email list and get the, that, those free prayers. And then the other one is the Bluebird Center. We just launched her website. Um, she is a, she and her team are a team of dietitians in London. And so I work with people all over the world. It's the best. I love it. And so her services are all about um, nutrition and eating disorders. And so she just wanted to show the three the options so people can click which one that they want best. But that's not the only format, right? So uh, the Hawaii Vacation Guide is one of my uh, dear clients as well. They're awesome. They sell Hawaii itineraries. And these are digital downloads. So they just want to display, hey, get a Hawaii itinerary of your vacation planning shortcut. And you can choose which island you're going to in order to get where you need. So that's another way to display this. If you are a restaurant, your uh, services section is probably a little bit different. It might be just featuring your menu. Hey, discover our menu, come see what we have. And then you can either view the full menu in order for you to know what to eat when you come in, or you can click that button to order online. Another example, couldn't leave out Cadence in all of this. Um, I love that Cadence has this section here. It's like want to build effective websites, which honestly is a little bit of the problem section kind of mixed in. Um, and you can read more all, all about this, but then they have that get Cadence option. But look at the difference in the layout between all of these options. They're doing the same thing. They're functioning the same way, but we've got to give people a way to buy. On my website, I don't have them in one section. Mine are layered together. So it's okay if you don't have one section for your entire services. My first one is all about DIY resources for getting people, uh, giving people access to shop the customizable themes. I call them like website in a boxes is basically what they are, like design shortcuts. 
Um, and then underneath that, you keep scrolling down. There's a few extra sections. Then it's talking about joining the membership, which is a completely different thing. But you can see why the visuals that I've chosen here, I don't want these to all be fit together in one section. It makes sense to showcase the themes. It makes sense to showcase all of the value that's inside of that membership with a uh, little tech stack picture here. And then there's a third section to work with me directly. So anyway, I just wanted to show you going back through all of these, that there is no right or right, right or wrong way to design this necessarily, but you do wanna make sure that you have that ingredient where people can work with you and buy your products. All right, ingredient number five is all about the about section. So when I say the about section, a lot of people will start to think about the your about page. And I want you to know that the about section is not about you and it's actually relatively short on the homepage. It's just enough information that um, someone can connect with you and learn how you can help and serve them. So leave out any unnecessary details like, hi, I'm Katie. I live in Arizona. I'm a mom. Like all of that's great, but that needs to go on the actual about page because you need to do two things in this about section. And that is to express empathy and authority. So empathy is saying like, we know what it's like to experience X, Y, Z that you're going through. And we've helped thousands of people or we're qualified to help you because we have all these accolades or we have this degree or we've helped other people do the same thing. So you want to ultimately create like a little formula here of introducing yourself and your brand and then use empathy and authority. We know what it's like too. And that's why we are equipped to help you in these in these banners. So try to leave out all of the personal type details because at the end of the day, people are only there to learn how you're going to help and serve them. Next, um, oh, I'm going to show you some examples here. So you can see mine in the yellow. That is the empathy, empathy. So I say, I know what it's like to feel frustrated and confused by all the moving pieces it takes to launch a website and market effectively. And then starting in the green is where I go through all of the authority. I won't read through all of it. You can pause this video later in order to read it. And then uh, here's milestonemom.com. She does something similar, except she flip-flopped it. So she has her authority piece first because that's relevant for her industry. Then she has her empathy piece second. So she says, hi, I'm Erica. I'm a pediatric developmental therapist, certified teacher and mom. And I'm passionate about helping parents not only learn different areas of their child's development, but also figure out what to do if there's a suspected delay. And then she goes into, I know how hard it can be to navigate. So that's the empathy piece that she's added there. And then Michelle from Making Sense of Sense, um, she kind of weaves hers all together where she's saying, I started this um, for her own path to, to basically uh, freedom, or financial freedom, excuse me. And then she gives an example right away. For example, she was able to pay off $38,000 in student loans in seven months. So in this example, she's not only starting with just like introducing and building that connection, but she immediately hits you with that authority. So she kind of weaves uh, weaves those pieces in, but they don't have to be super long. They can be short and sweet and just get on to uh, the point. Ingredient number six. How y'all doing? In the comments, if, if you guys are getting value, let me know. I would love to know uh, if this is, if this is um, going well for you. Okay, number six is all about social proof. So social proof is a marketing strategy based on the idea that people are more likely to take a specific action if they see others doing the same thing. If a shopper isn't sure about your product or service, they will often look around and see what other people think about your brand before they make a decision. And this is according to Forbes, pull this from Forbes. So there's lots of ways that we can incorporate social proof. And on this next slide, I've got a few examples. So you can have a logo farm uh, or just like a place where you've been featured. So you can do like an as seen on or a featured, or you can even have these little logo, not logos, a uh, little icon section, like the second one. So I believe this one is from Trustpilot, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't know if I remember where I got grabbed that screenshot from. Um, but this one's saying trusted by 70,000 active members, 4.7 out of uh, five based on 9,300 reviews. So this is just showing numbers like, hey, we don't just do this for fun or help our family. Like we're doing this for the masses and look at all the people that we've helped. So even just these like little snippets of data can be really valuable. Um, obviously, testimonials is another way. So you can highlight one testimonial and feature it. Or like the screenshot on the right hand side, um, you can have a whole lot of testimonials that are that are showing there. 
Okay. Um, this is my client um, from moneymakingmommy.com. And so Kelly has her about section and then she immediately includes her logo farm right underneath that. So when it comes to uh, social proof, you really want to kind of sprinkle this around throughout your website. So this is, um, you may have like three or four social proof sections, even on your homepage and all throughout your website. So you might have a testimonial, like so in my example, I'll give you my example. When I go to my website, um, in between my two services, since I have them stacked apart, I have a, a grouping of two testimonials that speak to both of those services. So it's like I sprinkled that in. And then at the very bottom of my website, I also have the um, trusted by. So instead of saying, these are all the places I've been featured in, I say, these are all the clients that trust me. And that's another way to build uh, to build that. Um, credibility because this ultimately social proof is a credibility builder and people want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. I'm sure you guys have heard that. Um, ingredient number seven is having some sort of email list sign up on your page. So I want you to get your visitors' email addresses and be able to contact them anytime you want, regardless of algorithm changes. So I'm sure many of you are really familiar right now with the Google helpful content update. I have several clients who got just slammed by the, their traffic is just abysmal after this dang uh, update by the algorithms. And so uh, it's a really great time during times like these to make sure that on your website, you are getting people's emails long after um, they're no longer visiting your website. So you can follow up with them and nurture them uh, again, independent from any algorithms that are going on and long after they have leave, left your website. So there's a few ways you can do that. The first way is to give away something for free. It's called a lead magnet or an opt-in uh, in exchange for their email. So this is the Hawaii. Oh, I have the wrong uh, text there. This is actually the Hawaii vacation guide. I'm sorry. I missed that. Um, the Hawaii vacation guide al allows you to download their cheat sheets. And if you click on it, a little mobile modal pop-up will appear. And then you could type in your email address. And so they will send that to you via email. And then you'll be on their email list and they'll provide additional value until you unsubscribe. And then in on the cookingmom.com, the cooking mom is one of my first food blogs I ever did. It was such a joy to work with Amy. And hers just says, my recipes, your inbox. Join over 15,000 others, which is another tactic to add that social proof in as well. So by adding that number 15,000, it's like, oh, dang, there's a lot of people that already enjoy her recipes. I want to be one of them too. So that's another great uh, social proof piece. And if you click on that sign up now button, this is the little modal pop-up that we designed uh, here and you can see all of that. Uh, and all of this, again, all of these examples that I'm sharing with you, I literally built in Cadence because Cadence is incredible. Okay. This is for making sense of sense.com. And she just has a subscribe to our newsletter. She says, get valuable financial insights, expert tips, and inspiring stories delivered to your inbox. I typically don't like to advise people to do just to sign up to my newsletter because people really don't want more news in their inbox. They want to know that you're going to be there to support them and give value. Um, but Michelle's uh, the OG of blogging. So it makes sense for her in this case. But if you're kind of in the newer um, phase of your business, I highly recommend doing what the Hawaii Vacation Guide did and like give away value in exchange for their email for free because this is ultimately their first transaction with you so you want to make it count and you want to provide that value um, so this is another way you can do that and also we used a lot of animation right here um, for this little thing so if you actually go to making sense of sense.com you can see um all of her her animation that we are using for for lottie um do you gary says do you recommend getting name and email or just email um the more form fields that you have on your form, the uh, more friction is there. So it, the less form fields can lead to higher conversion. So I would honestly say test it. And do you need someone's first name? I personally love to have someone's first name so I know who I'm talking to and how I'm building a relationship with them. Um, because I do read my emails when people reply. So like, I want to know who's who I'm talking to and all of that. But it's not necessary. And a lot of marketers like don't really care to include their first name. They'll just say, hey, and then a comma in their email list instead of using their first names and personalizing. So it's really a personal preference and also maybe worth testing because um, you may can increase your conversions on that depending on uh, whether that name field is there or not. Um, okay, let's move on to ingredient number eight. And this is to feature your best content. So blogs, YouTube videos, or podcasts. 
Um, if you are not currently doing this, then obviously omit this, but I highly recommend that you do start content creation. It's a great way to get some organic traffic, especially if you can rank or you can build some, uh, some traffic to those, to those places. So here are some examples. So Rachel Wojo, her said the latest from Rachel, it's a picture of her podcasting because that's her primary, um, resource. And then she's got her episode names that are flowing in here. Uh, I've also got, I'm going to go down on the screenshot. This is from poshpennies.com. She has a section on her website that's talking about, I love finding all the best uh, decor deals online. We have a little feature of the little couches. And then she's featuring her um, posh picks is what she calls them. Uh, the making sense of sense. There's another like grid of blog posts. There's a hundred ways you could design these, but ultimately you want to get um, your best articles in front of people. And also, uh, if you want to um, make sure that like if you have a I'm going to go kind of a, an advanced tip here. Um, domain authority is an arbitrary number, but it is um, helpful. So like if a lot of people are linking back to your main homepage and you want to push some of that domain authority to some of your main blog posts, I highly recommend actually individually linking which posts that you want people to see here. That's also a great monetization strategy, especially if you've got some really high um, converting affiliate posts in there. So instead of just letting it be a most recent blog role, actually curate this section so that it's the most helpful information, makes you the most money, um, things like that. Um, okay. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is if you are a local business and you're thinking, I don't know about blogging, answer your customers frequently asked questions in blog posts. And then as soon as they click into it, they'll read a whole thing and you can provide more calls to action either in the sidebar or throughout your content in order to take that next step and become the customer. So if there is a, a question in their mind and you can address that right there on the page without them having to call you or anything like that, they boom, get their answer and then they convert, then that's a really great resource to include on your homepage. Okay, and ingredient number nine is your final call to action. So I like to say on every page, don't let there be a dead end road. Don't want someone to get to the end of a page on your website and be like, cool, all right, X, I'm leaving this website. So when you can include a final call to action, this is um, a nonprofit website from impactfrance.org. This is one of my clients. And uh, theirs is, uh, there says, will you stand with the French? And then I'm going to read the second sentence. Let's unite and allow Jesus to shine his light through French believers. Learn how you can join us and share Jesus's light in France. And then there's two buttons. You can support a French ministry or you can get email updates. And then it goes into the footer, which is the junk drawer. So I don't have a ton of examples. I just wanted to show you this one. I think you'll get the picture of this. But have that final call to action um, and make sure that people know, like, don't leave without doing the one thing that you really want them to do. This is the bonus. So this would make number 10 uh, if we were calling it ingredient number 10, but the, don't forget about the, the footer. Again, this is like the junk drawer of your website. It provides an additional way for your users to navigate around your site. So this is where you wanna put your social media icons. This is where you wanna put all of the places. So if you are a content creator and you have a lot of categories, put them all down here so people can easily navigate. Um, if you want it to be really slim and small, that's fine too. I know a lot of people ask me, um, should I include my Instagram feed in my footer? And I would say 100% depends on your strategy. If uh, social media is one of your primary ways that people find you, then it makes sense. Otherwise, I think it can be a distraction and can, when someone gets to the bottom, instead of doing your call to action, they might wind up going over to social media. And again, they bounce and you lose them and you miss a conversion. So um, I would say only unless social media is one of your primary marketing strategies and you've got solid funnels in your social media accounts, then I would put it in the footer. But a lot of people will do it just because it looks pretty. And my philosophy is we're not here to build pretty websites. We're here to build uh, connecting and converting websites or websites that connect and convert. Okay. Um, so let's recap all of these together. Uh, ingredients for a successful homepage. And if you'll see the, the straight line, I typically like to advise that those are all together. So like the footer and the first three, I like those that have to be in that order. And then all the other ones, sprinkle it around like confetti, move things around in a way that works for you. Um, so again, clear, visible navigation, effective hero section, a problem section, ways to work with you or buy your products, 
about section that expresses that empathy and authority, social proof to build trust and credibility, your email list sign up, featuring your best content, final call to action, and then your footer and your junk drawer. So let's now talk for just a second about what that homepage process looks like. Now you kind of know what goes on the homepage. Well, what does that look like? Step one, you need to outline and wireframe. And I'll talk a little bit here about how I do that. Step two, then you need to write all the content, gather the photos, get everything that you're going to need in order to go into the design and the build phase. One thing I see, especially DIYers, um, a mistake I see DIYers make, or make a lot is that they wind up just opening up their cadence builder and they're like, great, I'm going to build my homepage. And maybe they're looking at a template or something like that, but then they're trying to squeeze their content into this template or just staring at a blank page. And I really want you to work on your content for your strategy for conversion and connection off of the website builder. So do that first. So let's, let's talk about what that looks like. Remember, content dictates design, not the other way around. So you can do wireframing. There's a picture down here that's showing you like what a real wireframe looks like. It looks like just kind of like a, a grayed out version. You, you can't really see text. We just know the title is going to go there. We know a button will be here. Um, there are really cool tools that you can use, fancy tools like Adobe XD and Figma and all of that. But most of my clients aren't ready to learn a tool like that. And so I just tell them to go open up a Google Doc like what I see on, you see on the right-hand side. If you see a hero section that you like out in the wild and you're gonna build your own website from scratch using Cadence, you take a screenshot of it, right? So like this is one of my hero sections that are in my DIY dream site library. So I use this and I built this for my own business if this were what my website looked like. So I had a picture of a website, a picture of myself, and then I have my title. But as you can see down below, there's this little table. You can see title goes here, sub, sub headline goes here, button text goes here. So this is a good way to just like get your ideas going. Like, okay, how do I want this to look? How would I wireframe this in like a table format? Um, even just basic text is fine. Just get the flow down and going. Then come back after you're like happy kind of with the flow of the, of the layout. Then go back and actually add your title. Actually work on that description. Actually put all of your about content, et cetera, in there. Um, so going back, then you would go into the design and the build phase. Um, so you can design and build in Cadence either from scratch, or you can use the built-in templates that Cadence provides. I am super grateful for everything that they, um, offer. If you are a beginner, you can really build a website for free using Cadence. It's incredible. They're very generous with the amount of tools that they provide for free. So get started just by using their design library and using one of their starter templates. But if you're going to use one of their starter templates, customize it based on the content you created. So you might need to move sections around or customize a section, um, but it's a great way. A template is a great way to have a starting point and not have to build completely from scratch. If you want even more resources for templates and things like that, um, DIYDreamSite.com, like I mentioned before, we have custom uh, child themes. We are not custom. Sorry. We, we have Cadence child themes and we are just getting started with building our shop. We've got two in there now around Black Friday. We'll have two more in there. We're going to have a new style site as well as a food blog site uh, theme in there coming around Black Friday. And also we have, uh, you can access the membership. So if you already have a theme and you're happy with it, you, you just want the templates, more templates, tutorials and coaching to build your site, then that's a great place to um, get even more design shortcuts. So I know that child themes are not required with Cadence because of the way that they've built the tool. It's really incredible actually. Um, but if you want basically a website in a box or a design shortcut, um, that's really the main reason to get a child theme. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share that additional resource. These are these are not free. Um, these are paid uh, resources. So, but I'd, I'd be happy to help you guys figure out how to DIY your own website if that's for you. And then my last thing I'll share is that if you did want to work with me, again, you can work with us on those DIY resources I just talked about. And you can also hire me and my team. I have one full-time designer working with me right now. I've got a few VAs. Um, and if you need us to restyle one of your Themes. So one of the themes that are um, in DIY Dream Site, we'll do the whole setup and uh, walk you through the whole process of a custom, like kind of like a custom site, but we're going to start with the design. 
or, and I also do custom design projects for clients too. And I also have a bunch of free blog posts. You can join my email list to get tips and updates as well. So I really, really hope that um, you guys found this really valuable. And uh, that's all that I have to share with you guys today. Thanks so much for having me. It was really, really an honor. I think we've got a few minutes for, for q and A. I think Michelle wants to pop back. Cool. Yeah. Hey, Katie, thank you so much. That was so, wow. First of all, I think you talk faster than I do, which is like oh, do a I? lot to be said. <laughs> it's like, I've got so much to share. I just want to get it all out there, which was fantastic. Um, yep. I'm going to leave the screen up for just a second. If you want to follow up with Katie later, take a screenshot right now because it's going away in three, two, one. All right. I want to make sure people have an opportunity to make sure to follow up with you later. Great, we do have great. just a couple Thank questions. You. I was trying really hard to follow along and like not pull up questions you already answered. So if you've already answered them, please help me. Okay, um, but the I first will. one I want to bring up is, is from Matt Howell, who wants to know if the newsletter doesn't already take away traffic from the call to action. So if somebody um, has a newsletter, sign up. I would say it, I, it depends on what your primary call to action is. So there's typically like a primary and a secondary. So if your primary call to action is work with me, then that would be your what you put like in the top corner of your of the navigation bar, as well as in like the hero section. But then I would put the email list sign up kind of down towards the bottom because it's not competing. If someone like makes it all the way down to the bottom section, then you'll have your email list sign up. There's also other ways to capture email list signups as well. So like blog sidebar, um, you can insert Cadence element hooks within uh, your actual content. If you're a pro user, you can use the element hooks feature with Cadence. It's my favorite feature of all time, by the way. Um, literally would die if I didn't have that. <laughs> so you can, you can use uh, other tools within Cadence and other parts of your website to convert those people. But if you put it further down the page, then no, uh, it won't distract from your primary call to action. It's not like putting two things side by side and saying, which one's it going to be, right? <laughs> um, Trisha asks, uh, right, exactly. if, you're talking about, yeah, if you're talking about content uh, first, then shouldn't wireframing happen second when you were talking about wireframing? Um, I like to, it, it really, it's really half, uh, half a dozen six, I don't remember what the term, what the phrase is. It, it's, it's whatever you really want to do. It's whatever works for your workflow. For me, I like to think about, let me think about the layout that I want while also considering the content. But sometimes I know that I need a title and I know I need a description, but I don't know what's going to, what I'm going to say in that description, if that makes sense. Yeah. So sometimes I like to start with the wireframing more so I can get the flow of the overall uh, layout before I dive into the minutia of like, okay, what am I going to say about my empathy section or my authority section? So it's kind of just sure. like that general sketch, honestly, than it is. And you can use paper and pen if you want to, <laughs> in order to just like <laughs> exactly. sketch it out instead of like wireframing out of Google Doc. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then um, Tim wanted to know, she's, he said that you mentioned downloads and PowerPoint. Are you going to make those available to us? I can. Um, I don't have it yet, but I, if you'll go to katieboykin.com forward slash amplify, I will be sure. I'm at a conference right now, so it may be a few days where I can get that up, but I will have those available just as soon as I can. Um, so katieboykin.com forward slash amplify. I will be sure to have my slide deck if you guys right. want to um, download that um, from this presentation. Yep. And if you send those over to us at Cadence, we'll make sure they go up on our after event um, materials as well. Katie, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Uh, it's been great. I'm going to pull up a couple quick banners. I know you said nobody wants a newsletter, but I'm still putting ours up there because the Cadence <laughs> newsletter has some really good stuff. <laughs> well, right. We have the podcast. We have some great stuff. You, you find out what's happening, what's coming down the pike, what new things we're putting into, into uh, Cadence and how we're making improvements continually. So if you do want to be on our mailing list, go to cadencewp.com slash new newsletter dash subscribe over on Twitter slash X. We are at cadencewp as we are also on Instagram. We will be back in about seven minutes at the top of the hour with Craig Hewitt. Katie, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Really appreciate Absolutely. you being here. Enjoy the rest. Enjoy the rest of your conference and uh, enjoy you. your weekend. We'll see. We shall see All you. All right. Later. Thanks.